way. What's wrong with it? Less cheats! More macaroni. Less macaroni. More cheese. More cheese and macaroni. Oh, perfect. I hate macaroni and cheese. It's no secret that the Sonic the Hedgehog fan base is one of the most tumultuous in gaming, and depending on when you join this speedy blue ship, you may hold different sentiments about the state of the franchise. If you were a fan from the start, I'm sure that the perspective of watching the peaks and valleys of the franchise has likely not been easy. When I was integrated into the series at a very young age, Sonic was still searching for itself as a series in the mid to late 2000s with really gimmicky games like Black Knight, Unleashed, etc. Still, despite not witnessing the mood change from the adventure era to Sonic 06, it's still been a roller coaster just going from Sonic Generations to Sonic Boom and surfacing back with Sonic Mania. So now that I'm older and have long exited the childhood part of my Sonic fandom, I view everything through slightly jaded yet sympathetic eyes. With that in mind, a recent tweet caught my attention and truly made me process the state we've left the Sonic fanbase in for the next generation of fans. There are young kids out there who are getting their first Sonic experience from the Wii U deal period or from polar opposite times of Sonic Mania and Forces. And while I don't agree with bullying kids just because they enjoy an objectively mediocre game like Forces, it does bring attention to the fact that this will shape a very different fan than someone who came up on Colors and Generations or on the Genesis titles or on the Adventure Era games. There is a clear split between players who hold bias toward Mania and what part of Sonic it represents and to those who wholeheartedly enjoy the current state of modern Sonic a la Forces. Ultimately, I think Sonic Frontiers will be crucial in cementing how this next generation of Sonic fans will view the franchise. Let's talk about it. Now, to clarify, the Sonic fanbase has always been divided. Ever since the series took the leap into 3D on the Dreamcast, there has always been a discourse. Some people love what the Genesis titles established, and others love the 3D reimagination of what Sonic is. The problem comes in when the series begins to stumble throughout the 2000s as it tries to find something that sticks in terms of a great 3D Sonic title. They were bound to have some good moments, like the day stages in Unleashed, or Sonic Colors, or Generations. But for many, nothing was able to satisfy enough of the fanbase for us to stop complaining. Regardless, what every generation of Sonic fan can agree is that the majority of the 21st century Sonic has been a laughing stock of gaming, regardless of how big and important he is as a character and as a property. So, as we are hopeful for a consistent period of rejuvenation and a return to consecutive great games, the fans coming up under us have to work with the shambled state of the base that we've left as a result of 20 years of discord. Looking towards Frontiers, I hope the game is so well put together that it can act as a non-anniversary related closure to the latest stint of Sonic Strife in the fanbase. In recent times, it seems as if the easiest way to please a fanbase is to make a game that does its best Breath of the Wild impression from both a visual standpoint and scope standpoint. Not to pre-dismiss what Frontiers will ultimately become, but the game is already advertising itself in its earliest promotions as a high velocity open zone freedom with different biomes and landscapes which to me, and to many others, rings similar ideas to some of the best games in the last few years like the aforementioned Breath of the Wild, Super Mario Odyssey, and more. And as we see more prominent franchises like Kirby and Pokemon take up on these same buzzwords in the promotion of their latest flagship titles, we start to see the direction that titles need to take in order to satisfy these increasingly discordant fanbases. So, if Frontiers does deliver on these hints 
on an open world and expansive claims, it sparks some discussion on what happens next depending on fan reaction. It may be in some bias, but I continue to look back at Sonic Adventure 2. Much of the response of the 3D titles that follow SA2 was compared to it as a basis of satisfaction. So, let's say Frontiers manages to finally do it. After Forces, after Lost World, after Colors, Unleashed Heroes, etc. What if Frontiers manages to garner the best response and legacy from a 3D Sonic title since the adventure era? Where does Sonic go from there? Because after two decades of yearning for just a respectable 3D title that has some weight in the industry for Sonic, where does the fanbase go after? What direction will the next generation of fans take the franchise? Even if we reach the 3D Sonic mountaintop once again, a section of fans will still never feel satisfied until they get some spiritual successor to Sonic Mania. I suggest all of these things to point out that we have really left the conversation and environment of the fanbase in a really subpar place for these young fans that are coming in at a quicker rate than ever before due to the movies. And while the range of games allows these fans to satisfy their own common riches, I think that it will be extremely critical for the next flagship title to come together and set a new principle for the level of quality and care that will go into the next era of the AAA mainline Sonic staple. After all of this dissatisfaction and disagreements, all these years poking fun at the more gimmicky titles or the punching bags of the industry like Sonic 06 and Rise of Lyric, or even putting the seemingly outlier outstanding titles like Generations, Mania, or even Colors on too high of a pedestal to continue to look down on whatever followed, I think that it is just due for Sonic to have a square one moment. Not a reboot, not a reinvention, just a breath of fresh air into the franchise that doesn't have to rely on nostalgia to get a pass. And I'm really hoping Frontiers can be the start of that. Because to put it flatly, the discussions that I see on the Sonic games people do or don't enjoy needs to change in a positive light. The movies were a huge boost to Sonic's popularity as a whole, and I know it always comes back to this whenever I discuss the Sonic fanbase, but Sonic is one of the most legendary and crucial figures in the relatively young history of the video game industry. And compared to his peers, it has just been rough. The character deserves better and the discourse surrounding Sonic needs to reflect that. Hopefully this holiday marks a new chapter that sets the franchise up for something of a renaissance era for Sonic. Because I need something to spark that joy and excitement again about a new Sonic concept. With that in mind, what do you think about the current state of the Sonic fanbase? What is your biggest worry about the direction the next generation of fans may take the series? What do you expect from Sonic Frontiers? And most importantly, which era of Sonic do you heavily connect to your childhood? Which is your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. If you made it to the end of the video, I truly appreciate you. If you enjoyed, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. We are almost at 1000 friends. And as always, take care, good game, and thank you for watching. Peace.